From Hollywood. What? What did he say? It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm pretty amused by the whole thing. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Here we are. Together again on the radio. And, um... The layoffs just keep on coming. We're always keeping you updated. And uh, take a look at some of the layoffs. It just gets worse. First of all, let me tell you, there was a prediction that layoffs will continue throughout 2009. That the unemployment rate will, not, uh, rate will exceed 9% nationwide. It probably will exceed 10% in California alone. It is bad, bad, bad. And um, let's see, where are some of these uh, layoffs? Pfizer, pharmaceutical giant Pfizer, third largest, uh, I'm sorry, they're in the process, uh, Pfizer is, of uh, trying to uh, complete a merger with another drug maker, Wyeth. Uh, they are laying off 8,000. Sprint, Nextel, which is now one company, uh, they are also eliminating 8,000 jobs. Home Depot, you, know, you look at Home Depot, you say, well, that place is still doing well, right? Well, not that well. They're eliminating 7,000 jobs. General Motors, already having problems that are well documented, is cutting 2,000 jobs and plants in Michigan and Ohio. Wow. Unbelievable. Caterpillar. Now keep in mind, Caterpillar makes what? Steamrollers, earth movers, what have you. You would think that the, a company that makes that kind of stuff would be uh, in a pretty good position with your new president, Barack Obama, talking about uh, fixing roads, uh, taking care of infrastructure. That uh, You'd see Caterpillar equipment everywhere, right? Largest maker of mixing and construction equipment in the world, Caterpillar is. 20,000 job cuts at Caterpillar. Most of which have already been made, including 5,000 new layoffs of white-collar workers, which will occur globally by the end of March. Halliburton, Dick Cheney's favorite company, oil field services provider. Uh, they'll be eliminating jobs in markets particularly hard hit by the recession. Its larger rival, Schlumberger Limited, said last week it's cutting up to 5,000 jobs worldwide the first half of this year. Brooks Automation Incorporated said it plans to get rid of 350 jobs or 20% of its workforce. Microsoft slashing up to 5,000 jobs over the next 18 months. Intel is cutting 6,000 manufacturing jobs. United Airlines parent, UAL Corporation. What United Airlines parent? What are the companies does UAL Corporation own? Except, what does UAL stand for? Oh, that's right. United Airlines. I mean, do they own a sports team or a chain of yogurt franchises? UAL Corporation, the parent company. Yeah. They are laying off a thousand people on top of fifteen hundred they, they axed late last year. It says here there is no end in sight. A survey by the National Association for Business Economics shows that thirty nine percent of forecasters predicted job reductions through attrition or significant layoffs over the next six months, up from thirty two percent in the previous survey in October. Wow. And the beat goes on. More and more people getting laid off. More and more people getting fired. I mean, it's uh, it's in every category. People losing their gigs. I didn't even bring up the radio business. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's outrageous. People out there looking for work. People wondering where their next... Uh, Next paycheck's going to come from. People wondering how they're going to pay the rent, pay their mortgages. 
You know, it's and, and I don't mean to make light of this. This is serious stuff. And this is something like uh, we have never seen in our lifetime. Really, honestly. You know, unless we are 85 years old and over, which most listeners to this show are not, this is just something we've never seen before. And I got to tell you, it's uh, even tougher. It's bad enough when it's you. What about your parents? How many listeners are to say 25? And your parents are, say, 50. And they are out of work. They can't find jobs. They've been laid off. This happened to my dad, which was not during these kinds of economic hard times. But still, I know what it's like. You know, my dad at 61 years old was laid off from his job. 43 years on the job and he got canned. I mean, at, at, at 61, my dad had never filled out a resume. He had not been on a job interview since he was 18 years old. And here was my dad, you know, trying to figure out how to dress for an interview and how to write a resume. Because <laughs> he'd never done it. I'll bet there's people listening who not only are facing this possibility, but you got parents facing this possibility. I know there are people out there right now who have family members begging to come crash at your place. I know there are people who are consolidating. I saw a story the other day here in Los Angeles. And there was a lot of talk that because the real estate business has been so lousy, uh, because prices have dropped so much here in L.A., uh, about 30% in the past year, that uh, many people would uh, step down. They'd trade down from owning a house to renting. And so there had been a prediction that rents were going to go up. But the fact is, rents have not gone up. Rents are going down. Vacancy rates are going up. Do you know why? Because people stepping down from owning houses are stepping past renting an apartment. And they're stepping back into their parents' homes. This is a fact. People are not even going to rent apartments or sign leases or make commitments. They're simply saying, Mom and Dad, I need a place to stay. And I'll bet there's people out there who have parents in that same position, right? You know, your dad lost all his uh, retirement money to Bernie Madoff or... Your mom lost her secretarial gig or whatever, and now suddenly they're they're you know trying to hit on you. Ouch! So we like to take your temperature at least once a week on these economic issues. We like to uh, uh, to see how bad things really are out there, to see uh, how it's affecting your family, how it's affecting you. See, maybe you were one of the people who thought this wouldn't touch, and now it's touching you. You laughed when Ed McMahon was in trouble, remember? <laughs> so did we. But uh, now, now look. Now look what's happening. You know, we ask you to tell us in your own words, from your own perspective, because it's better than any commentator on TV, any columnist in the newspaper. Are they still printing newspapers anymore? I think most of them have gone out of business by now. Oh. But, uh, yes, we like to get it in your own words. Tell us how bad... Are things Tom like it? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Tom like it? One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likes Show. The Tom Likes Show. Christine, hello. Hi, Tom. How are you today? Great. Tom, I find your show entertaining. I listen to you every single day on my way home from work, and I find it very entertaining. And I I agree with some of what you say, but nonetheless, I, I do listen to you every day. I'm a long time listener. Um, I, I, however, lately, you know, everything is really bad, Tom, and we know it's really bad. But you just it seems to me like you just keep dwelling on it and dwelling on it and, like, Almost like, you know, you're looking to make... Well, the, it's, it's, it's not like there isn't new information every day. Every day there's some new fact. Look at all the companies that have announced layoffs today alone. Exactly, but we know so that. So should I pretend like, it isn't happening? 
No, not at all. But do, we, do you have to bring it up every day? Like you're I don't bring problem. it up every day. Uh, to, like to, uh, for example, I didn't bring it up on Thursday of last week. I don't bring it up every day. But I do bring it up because it is what is on everyone's mind right now, including yours. Actually, not really, uh, until I listen to you. So you, so you don't really care about any of this? I, I no, I do care, but um, you know, I just keep going on every day. Got to, got, got to do what you got to do. I'm, I don't, you know, if I really sit and just dwell on it and think about it, you know, it's not. It's going to be very counterproductive. So, what do you think we should be doing? Uh, just uh, having a party over here, talking about well, how good everything to, is. We could be listening. We could be listening to the five dollar foot long song over and over again. Yeah, well, is that what you'd prefer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if, if that's what if that's day. what we didn't do that for four hours, but if that's what you prefer. There you go. Shut up. Yes, it's the uh, president's uh, plan to to feed hungry people. There it is, right there. That's fabulous, Tom. I love your humor. Well, <laughs> I really do. Thank you for that. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Dave on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. I actually just moved out here from New York, and uh, pretty much in the nine opposite. seconds. Uh, well, I just wanted to say that uh, you say that rent is going to go down and uh, a lot of apartments going to be empty. But not only that, you're going to have a... Well, it's all, no, no, I didn't say that's going that. That was not a prediction. That's a fact. It's already happened. Well, it seems like it's going to get worse. I think it's going to be... One of, the reasons that, uh, one of the reasons that apartment rents have gone down is because many of these new apartments being built in places like Hollywood and in downtown Los Angeles... Uh, there, there are no buyers for them, and so the uh, developers are forced to rent them out. Well, I think they're freaking out now because prices aren't going low. Because uh, I've been looking for a place, uh, you know, that's pretty decent. And coming from New York, it's it's a lot better, but it's uh, still kind of expensive, you know, compared to most. Well, of the you country. should have been here a year ago uh, when it was thirty percent more expensive. Well. Uh, I think people are going to freak out first and try to get as much as possible for, for it. But uh, you're also going to see deterioration of these neighborhoods that are kind of on the fence. And, you know, you're going to see more crime. and uh, that's Well, you're going to see more crime everywhere. Uh, because when uh, the unemployment rate goes up, more people want to steal what you have. Yeah. Well, I mean, let's hope that things uh, get a lot better with... Uh, of course, with it couldn't get new- worse than the parking lot at Giant Stadium, now could it? Not at all. Well, I, I never went to the Giant Stadium anyway. That's New Jersey. Yeah, but uh, you know they wear that NY on the helmet, and you know where all those yutzes come from. Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those, are, those are your the, no, no, no. These are the people who are upset that the Eagles beat the Giants. Remember, they were wearing yeah, giant I'm a Rams uniforms. Fan, so. Yeah, I understand that. But those are your <laughs> people. Just reminding you. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. In case, you, in case you thought you were bringing culture from the East Coast to us savages out here, just want you to know we all have YouTube. <laughs> Thanks. Here to help. Nine seconds it took him to mention he's from New York. Okay. We're all impressed. Not. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. The Tarek telephone number. It's Dan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, long-time listener, but listen, I have to say this, with all due respect, I believe you and the rest of the Obama worshippers are fear-mongers, and it's, it's really mm. not that bad. I mean, what's going on here? It's not nice. Well, it's not bad if you've got, if you got all the money that you've got, Dan. I, no, it must no, be no, great I'm to be rich. You, but I am a senior tech. At Se- I'll say who I work for, Sears, and, and we let a few guys go, but five, ten years ago, <laughs> uh, people were laid off as well. It's not 1929 to 33, sir. Well, if you look at the financials of Sears, you might be... Be convinced that it is because I I've looked at uh, Sears and <laughs> I've right? seen I've seen how well Sears is doing and your boy Eddie Lambert there just doing a bang up job in the retail business fantastic <laughs> you, you and I, how's you that Sears stock the doing these days I pal I do not believe I think have you checked out have you checked out the stock well I don't know I, I wonder how Sears stock performed in 1929 versus now. I'll have to look that up and get back to you I, they, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys hate it when you have ammunition. <laughs> oh, baby.
1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let me take a look here. Sears Holdings, S-H-L-D is the ticker symbol. And, uh, yes, it's uh, $45 a share. And if you go into uh, some of the, uh, let's see, how far up was it uh, in the past? Let's go to the uh, one year. Oh, yeah, it was up over $100 a share a year ago. Five years ago. Yeah. No, it, uh, it was uh, about where it is now in 2004. But uh, it had gone as high as $180 a share. And now it's down to $45 a share. So it's lost 75% of its value uh, just since the uh, the fall of 2006. Quite a company there. <laughs> well, but, but the economy isn't bad. Come on. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Mena on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Mena. I am a long-time listener, first-time get-thrower. <laughs> Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Um, actually, I just had a really quick comment about um, the economy and all that good stuff. Uh, my dad is actually uh, 82 years old, and so he, you know, he went through the first depression, and he always tells me about how it's so much worse now to him, like how everything's going down. Um, people losing their houses, I mean, you know, uh, third email. I'm sorry? Well, I didn't say anything, but I will say oh. something here. Uh, one thing you have to remember is that not as many people owned houses for the first Great Depression. So that's why one reason you see more people lose their homes is because uh, many less people owned homes back then. Right. Um, well, I mean, you know, just like like everything that's going on. I mean, I know a couple of people have lost their jobs. I mean, you know, they're telling you about the unemployment, how you can't get through on the phone. You go there, you have to wait for like six hours. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy, I think. You know, and you're right. I think, um, I think crime's going to go up a whole lot just because there's people that don't want to lose their homes and are willing to do anything not to lose their home. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. And I thank you for the call. Teresa on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Great. Um, I just want to tell you that I truly appreciate all the comments that you're making. I am waiting for you to continue to give these individuals hell that don't think there is an economical problem. I currently have a family that is living in a home. There are three families there, including where one of the family members have their ex come back to live there because they've all lost their jobs. When I hear individuals getting on the phone saying there's not a problem, they are truly idiots. It is reality out there. People need to read the news, go on the Internet, pick up a newspaper, do whatever they can, and every single day they are going to see that there are issues out there of people losing their jobs, people having to live in homes, five, six, seven, eight, nine people in one-bedroom homes. There was a family over in the Inland Valley that sent a video to President Obama. These kids said, President Obama, my dad and mom just lost their job. There's six of us in the family, and we all had to move in with my aunt. And now there's 15 of us living in a one-bedroom home. Get a grip, people. There are problems out there. We're only hitting, we're just, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And I truly admire you when you go out there and you tell these idiots what's going on out there because they don't have a clue. I'm uh, trying my very best here, darling, and I thank you for that. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Josh on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. That's awesome. Hey, I just called because I actually heard good news when you opened the show. You said rents are going down, which is awesome because I had to move back in with my folks like six months ago. Yeah, well, uh, if you look around, you will see deals out there. And as I I said, part of it is because so many of these developers were building these million-dollar condominiums and lofts and what have you, and there's no buyers for them. And so now you're starting to see four lease signs outside these buildings. Yeah, I mean, I've been on both ends of it. I mean, we had a house in Arizona. And the job market uh, got too rough, so we decided to come back to California because it's a little bit stronger than Arizona overall. And the rents were falling in Arizona, so my house is falling into a deficit that's making it too hard to even rent here. Wow. So it's just, and I'm, I'm trying not to do the deadbeat thing, you know. 
and I want to keep the house and keep everything in good standing and uh, move past it because, you know, in the end, if I can keep a grip, it's going to work out nice. But it's just really tough when all, all things are falling down in all directions, you know? Oh, believe me, I do. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Top like his show. Whistle while you work. Oh, what a great place this is to work. And I'm not being facetious. You just got a whole lot better. Mm. Yes, babe. Plus, we have a job, which is always good. I love that. But look at all the layoffs going on in all these other companies. Caterpillar, Home Depot, Sprint, Nextel. <laughs> Halliburton, Schlumberger. It just goes on and on and on. How bad is it out there? That's what we find out from you from time to time here. 1 800 5 800 Tom. This is Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Great to speak with you. I think you're doing a terrific service for everyone out there. Thank you. Well, I, I just want to let you know how bad it really is out here. I'm a 23 uh, year old recent graduate. And I immediately came out into the workforce after graduating after five years of school down here in beautiful Southern California. And I immediately got a job with a Fortune 300 global company out here down in Costa Mesa. And I just recently come first of the year, received my six-month pink slip. Really? Yes. Now, I thought that this was going to be something that would turn into a career, basically. It's a very stable company. It's global, based out of France. And now, come to find out, then six, uh, now, I guess, five months, I will be jobless and maybe standing in the back of that unemployment line. Wow. Wow. Dad, did you think it wouldn't affect you? Um, you know, I, I always thought that it might. I never thought I was 100% safe. I couldn't be that ignorant. But, you know, I, I just thought I'd be a little safer than that. I don't think anybody is safe. Yes, I agree. I agree. So now I'm fresh out of school. Thought thought I was going to be a lot better off. I thought just getting stuck with a company like that, I'd be at least there for a few more years. But now here I am. Well, there are no companies like that. Yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, when you see that companies like Citibank and Bank of America and General Motors, the biggest companies in America, mm -hmm. are in this kind of trouble. What what companies are like that, as you say? Yeah, well, I agree, yeah. But, I mean, I, I guess I might have been playing a little, the ignorant card a little bit myself, too. Yeah, I think a lot of people are in denial about this. Yeah, and, well, I think that's why I'm really glad that you do, you're doing this service out there, because... I mean, like you said, no one's safe right now. Absolutely right, Steve. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mike. Yeah, I'm out there working around. People are keeping their heads up. You know, and it, 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 uh, it may be that it's, uh, it's, uh, it's on the media, but the media's a hype, too. We've got a dysfunctional media. And you're being a part of that, Tom. You like to dwell on that stuff. Well, wait a minute. Am I telling the truth here, or am I making something up? No, Tom, you're talking about some of the stuff that's floating to the top. You're not talking about too reality, because when you're out there talking to businesses, they're working. People are driving Well, I'm working, too, but guess what? Record. We have they're the highest unemployment rate we've had in a quarter century. Yeah, Tom, but that may be true, and there's some transition going on. So here, should we pretend it is, it's not going on? No, we don't have to pretend, Tom, but we, but we you don't have to sit and dwell on it. We're in, a, we're in a society where we sit around and we watch the news and we get into all this fear and all this crap. You know, we need to get on with things. There's a lot about. to be afraid of out there. Well, you know what? There's people out there that are, have their heads up. They're moving around doing things. I'm in the advertising and marketing business. We're doing stuff. With, people got money. But the thing that people are doing is they're listening to the hype and the fear that's going on and causing a hysteria. You know, what, hysteria? What, you could, this yeah, is just well, hysteria. Not entirely, Tom, all the way. There is a concern, yes. But, concern. you know, we can do without 
You know, we don't need another Mervyn. I mean, you can do it without people business. talking about the truth, about Mervyn's going out of business, Circuit City oh. going out of business, Linus and Things going out of business, Shoe Pavilion going out of business, but Starbucks having, profits down 95% year to year, uh, 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 20,000 layoffs in Caterpillar, 8,000 layoffs oh. spread next tell, 8,000 layoffs. I mean, yeah, you're telling yeah, Tom, me guys things are just guys great. We're singing time. in the rain here. It's no, fantastic. But you're talking about like Home Depot. Home Depot hires and and and, and fires people. That uh, that is not that is not. This is not just a, a part of the usual hiring and firing. This is layoffs due to the economy. Yeah, it, it is. It is part of it. But where's it going to no, be? No, it's not part of it. That's what it is. Yeah, but, t- see, but Tom, you're talking about. Uh, like it's completely devastating. What would be the attitude oh, that turns oh, around? I'm talking because about it like it's completely devastating. I'm talking about it like it's completely devastating. You're in what business? The advertising business? Well, listen, look, Tom, let me tell you. you, you which you part of the that, advertising business is doing so well? Would you tell us which part of the advertising and marketing business is doing as well as, as you seem to think? Well, it, it's, you know, you're going to have to be creative and be smart on this stuff. And I, you, I, you, you didn't answer my here. question. You didn't answer my question, because the answer is there is no part of the advertising business that is not deeply affected by the serious things that are going on out there right now. Absolutely. It it does go on. So I'm I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce and pretend this stuff isn't going on. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, Tom, what you're saying, I hear what you're saying. And you got to, you got to, you have a very. And at, not at any, and not at any point of this conversation, not at any point in this conversation, have you proven that anything I have said is untrue at all? Well, because you keep talking, Tom. I'm no, no, well, to, I want, I want to, you, that uh, you, you're going to stop talking right now, and now you're going to tell us specifically, line by line, the things that I said that are false. Ready? Go. What would be the thing that's going to change? No, around? no, no, no. Don't answer a question with a question. Name the things I said that are false. Ready? Go. I, have, I wasn't saying anything that wasn't false. So I everything I said is true. Time. Everything I said is true. Isn't that right? Did you just admit that? There is some validity to some did, of it. But did, what what, what even, parts did I it. say? What did I say that wasn't true? I'm waiting to hear. Tom, you're a bit of a drama. Thank you. And again, somebody with no facts here. <laughs> Jesus. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Ah, here's another version of the story. At least eighty five thousand new job cuts announced in a single day this Monday. As the rampant financial crisis hit more workers across the globe, eighty five thousand job cuts Monday alone. Monday alone. 85,000. <laughs> 1-800-5... Oh, come on, Tom, you're exaggerating. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Daniel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Daniel. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I haven't listened to you since I was lit like a wee boy. Wow. Hey, um... Listen, my my grandfather is a mechanic, and he's been getting a lot of uh, he hasn't getting a lot of work because the uh, economy's down. He works for like one of the four the, the four dealerships. Wow. Yeah, so we're, they're thinking of selling the house. And then where will you go? Uh, we don't know yet. Oh boy. Yeah, it's it's not good. Wow. Yeah, and, I, and I'm still in college, and I'm still working to get my degree. How does it feel uh, to see your dad in that position? Oh, it's my granddad. Your granddad, I'm sorry. It's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's so- I mean, where does he go? Go to a GM dealership? <laughs> I mean, where do you go? I know. I've been help- I've been trying to help him out. I mean, I, I mean, I work for the city, and I, I give him, like, I pay for my food and stuff. I pay like 40 bucks every two weeks I get paid to help him out. Wow. I bet you never thought you'd have to do that. No, I didn't. Wow. Yeah. All right, how, old, how old is your grandfather? Uh, he's, he's, in, he's almost a senior. He's, like, he's 65. 65 years old. Well, yeah. Not a lot of options when you're 65. And he's got Parkinson's. Oh, boy. Yeah. Can't, early stages. That's rough. I know. 
Sorry to hear that, pal. I really am. Hey, Tom, can you take me out with a, a JFK uh, a senior and junior? Yes. Yes, I can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's our telephone number. Marie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. Hi Thanks Marie. For, uh, taking my call. Um, I'm a school teacher and I have nine years teaching experience. This is my ninth year. Um, I make about seventy three thousand a year. It's pretty modest. I live within my means. But Thursday, our school district just informed us that we're facing a fifteen million dollar deficit and they mentioned the fact that teachers with about 12 years experience or less are going to be possibly pink slipped if you will that's the term they use that are um in our field and it's just a domino effect i see it with my students i see with my family my sister just got laid off from macy's um it's just you know, my brother's unemployed right now. It's it's awful. So I'm trying to help out my family as best I can. And I see it in my students who's, oh, my dad's not working, so he's picking me up today. And, you know, it's just, it, it's tough. And, and it's multiple families are, are living together, which is not really common in the area I work in, but it's just a reality. And, and people I, I thought I was immune. I'm, I mean, I have a master's, and I have nine years teaching experience. You know, it, it was last year they cut off, they terminated teachers with temporary contracts, and it's it's just hitting home, and it's, it's scary. Now, um, how do you deal with it personally? Do, do you freak out? Are you worried? Are you sad? How do you feel? I'm petrified. I, I, uh, my husband and I, he's a geologist. We live within our means. We have, we pay our mortgage on time. We pay our bills on time, and and everything. But all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, wh- where am I going to? Where, are the, where is the two thousand dollars a month going to come to pay my mortgage? You know, and I'm thinking, rainy day fund, no spending, no spending. It's just a bear. What we need right now, food our utilities and as as of thursday that's it no we're not going out to dinner cable hang out with our friends whatever but no movies no we 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 see a lot of plays we go to the music center quite a bit but mm, that's off the chopping block a lot of charities we donate to a lot of um the shakespeare festival in la a lot of uh, educational Different different things that help people in church, but it's just right now. Sorry, we have to you know think for ourselves and start putting away for a, not and, a rainy and by day, the way, you, you have you have storm. you have to wonder how many of those charities were uh, giving their money to Bernie Madoff to invest anyway. Oh, uh, that's tough. Yeah, and the veterans and all those groups. I hope not. Well, I hope not too. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Now we're trying to find out from you how bad things really are. 1-800-5800-TOM. We take your pulse on a regular basis because things are bad. 85,000 layoffs announced in one day. Wow. Vanessa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Thank yeah. you so much for your show. Sure. Sometimes you drive me crazy, but I usually figure out the reason you drive me crazy is because I'm learning something. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> Um, I gotta say, my uh, my sister was laid off this last year. Um, my another sister is only working part time right now because that's all the state can afford to pay her. Um, and uh, my mom recently, just very openly with all of us, has said, "You know, girls, if you need to move home, you're you're welcome here because that's what it may come to." And uh, looking around, I mean, I live in Hollywood, and looking around at all the for rent signs that are going up, I I tend to believe her. 
Have you noticed how many uh, businesses have gone out of business in Hollywood? How many restaurants have gone away? Virgin Megastore, Gaucho Grill. I mean, I can go down the list. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, the, the number of uh, little businesses that, that have been here for years and years, because I've lived here 10 years, and the number of businesses that have gone, uh, I mean, just in the last year, are it's astounding to me. And you were saying uh, all, these, all these huge apartment buildings have been going up uh, during the, the quote-unquote housing boom, and it's amazing to me how the, you know, it's just like... Uh, just a huge brake system turned on and just went with the building. Yeah, but I was I, seriously uh, recently. I was driving up Vine Street mm-hmm. in Hollywood, yeah. and uh, not far from the old uh, Palace Theater, there okay. is an apart one of these like uh, loft or condo complexes going up, and it has a big skin stretched over the side of the building, telling you that condos are available, if I recall correctly, between four hundred fifty thousand and one million dollars. Yeah. Now, imagine that. One million for a place where 15 years ago you had flop houses. You had people living in their own filth on the street. And now they're trying to charge a million dollars. Who has a million dollars to move into a condominium in Hollywood? Who has it? If, if anybody has it right now, they're, I think they're pretty much holding on to it. And um, several weeks ago, uh, I heard um, when uh, just after Obama was elected, he was being interviewed on uh, Meet the Press or something like that. And he said um, uh, something really interesting and, and very telling uh, that I hope people will pay more attention to. He said, uh, when, when you have companies that are laying off thousands of people, but you have CEOs who are still making $25, $35 million a year, something is wrong with that picture and something needs to change. Well, the biggest problem you had here is the fact that uh, people were overpaying for assets of all kinds. Houses in Corona, apartment buildings, little plots of land to build uh, condominiums on, uh, 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 radio talk show hosts. People were paying outrageous sums uh, to acquire assets. Yes, and then later absolutely. on, when the revenue didn't justify, uh, you know, having these assets, they try to unload these assets, and they just can't do it. And 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 so now that's why you have so many people desperate or walking the streets or whatever. Yep, and that's and that's uh, why it's amazing. Uh, you know, it's not unusual to hear of friends of mine who, you know, just a couple of years ago were saying, oh, I bought this and I'm going to flip this, this house and blah, blah, blah. And now they're going, oh, my God, if you know anybody who needs to rent a house or whatever, I've got three houses for rent. And I'm like, oh, good luck. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you, rents are going down, not up in, in L.A. They're going down. Absolutely. If you're in an apartment and the rent is too high, tell the landlord that uh, if they don't lower the rent, you're going to move. Oh, yeah. That's even in, in my building, because I live in, you know, like a little bungalow-style building right. where there's only like maybe 20 places. They, um, when when people were starting to build apartments around us, my neighbors started saying, Ooh, oh, we're so scared. What if they tear our building down? And I said, no, they're not going to tear it down, because I, I had been hearing as well, you know, that the, the housing bubble was going to burst. And sure enough... I'm, I know that the owners of the building now are so grateful that they didn't tear our little building down because at least they have a little building. That well, I'll bet they're grateful they didn't gouge you all on the rent, too, because yeah. uh, <laughs> that would have been very short-sighted. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Thanks for your show. Thank you, Vanessa. Appreciate the call. It's Peter on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. That's great to hear. Tom, I uh, I work in Beverly Hills. I l- work in an upscale, high-luxury jewelry store. And I want to let you know and everybody else know that in Beverly Hills is a ghost town. I mean, you have nobody going up Rodeo Drive except tourists taking pictures. There's nobody walking in stores. You have stores that are having sales that never had sales before. So what you're saying is a great service to the people, and the people should understand that. 
Well, I don't but, understand why people get upset at me when I bring this up, and I know the reason. They think if I go on the air and say, oh, 85,000 layoffs today, that it's going to hurt their business. So I should be Pollyanna, and I should be on the radio pretending that everything is just great, that I should do what George W. Bush used to do, say we're not in a recession, say things aren't as bad as they seem, say we're just seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, say uh, things are going to get better in the next quarter, the next half, the next year. I'm not going to do it. I refuse. I refuse. No, I, I don't blame you for refusing. People, all they want to they want to call you up and hear uh, you talk to these clowns that right. are knocking up their girlfriends or, right. or are looking out the windows and expecting to see the boobs and this kind of stuff. And when they see when they hear the truth, they can't handle the truth, as Jack Nicholson said. You are right about that. It's Cody on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. First time, long time. Thank um, you. I am one of the ones that got um, booted off the first phase of a manufacturing company I worked for for over 10 years off here. I'm not going to say the name because it's a very well known company that I'm sure you know. Um, and years ago, Clinton was there um, with the. Well, first of all, we're not going to name any company. You said you weren't going to name the company, then you went ahead and named it very cutely, but we're going to cut that out and uh, you got to leave the names of the companies out because they all sue us when, when they get mentioned. Oh, okay. Well, the frustrating part is that, number one, he said this would never happen. It would never leave California, let alone go out of the United States, because he was so um, pro-USA-made product. Um, and the first phase layoffs happened in on July 3rd. I lost my job, and um, it's going to continue until 2009. I'm sorry. I'm a little nervous. Hey, by the way, that's as well as they know today. It could accelerate. It could yeah. be worse. They could they they could be like Circuit City. Circuit City announced, "Well, we're going to close a few stores, going to tighten our belts, we're going to look for a buyer." And, Circuit City. and then Circuit City finally just said, "Well, nobody wants to buy us, so here goes liquidation sale. Uh, the final what?" But they brought this new CEO in, who he he's notorious. To look him up on the internet, he's notorious for coming and taking these big companies and tearing them down. He's hired all these. No, but guess guess what? I mean, the, the the services of guys like that are are in demand because lots of companies are being torn apart right now. It's not just your company. We're all feeling that pain. We're going to continue this conversation coming up here at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. And don't forget to uh, drop us a line because I read your emails during the course of the show. Send them to Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.